Section 1 and Yehuda came near to him. Rabbi Lazar discusses the role and meaning of the letters of the Allah. Just as the Torah begins with that, so was the world and man created with this letter. The Nukba we are told is as the Father always standing by to bless the relationship between the Creator and the Nukba is also discussed in some detail along with its importance for the recitation of blessings. The relevance of this passage because Bet is the first letter in the word. Blessing Bet was chosen to be the instrument of creation. The Hebrew letters are very much like DNA. They are the spiritual genetic information through which all existence comes into being. Connecting to the letters through this passage brings renewal, rejuvenation, and the connection with the creative forces of divinity that give rise to the universe as a whole. One then Yehuda came near to him. Bereshit 4418. Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion with the verse, You are our father, though Abraham be. Ignorant of us and Israel acknowledge us not you Hashem are our father our redeemer your name is from everlasting Yeshayah 6316 this verse has already been explained yet come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he created the world he did each day the work befitting it when the sixth day arrived the time for Adam to be created the Torah came before him and said Adam whom you want to create will provoke you unless you curb your wrath it would be better for him not to be created the Holy One blessed be he asked am I called long suffering for no reason to always created through the medium of the Torah and constructed by means of the Torah and as the Torah begins with the letter bet so was the world created with the letter bet for before the Holy One blessed be he created the world and all the letters were presented before him one by one in reverse order three top came before him and said would you create the world through me the Holy One blessed be he Responded, No, for many righteous people are destined to die through you in accordance with the verse and set a mark at top upon the foreheads of the Manyashis. 94. We have also learned this from the verse and begin with my sanctuary of it. 6 in which the word sanctuary should be read as sanctified who are the righteous. The world therefore will not be created through you. For the three letters Shinkup and Resh came before him each on its own. The Holy One blessed be he said it is not worthwhile to create the world by you for you are the letters which combine to create the word Lie have Shekhar and no lie deserves to rise before me as has already been explained. 5 then came the letters B and Zedek and so on until the letter CAF1 CAF descended from the crown Hebkeeter the higher and lower world shook until all was established using the letter better sign of blessing Hebkeeter and the world was created and constructed by it. 6 you may say that all of his the first letter and that the world should have been created through it he answers true but because the word damned heberer begins with the letter Allah the world was not created through it thus although Allah pertains to a supernal secret the world was not created by means of it so that no opening namely power and strength could be given to other side called damned rather the world was constructed and created by bet seven come and behold you are our father means that this world the look of zeir and been called you was constructed and created in this great mark by blessing similarly the world was created and constructed through bet which was a sign of blessing man was also created through it through the sign of blessing and was issued into the world therefore in this respect the nukba was considered the root of man and we address her as you are our father that is you are our root humankind too was created with the mark of blessing eight the verse though Abraham. Be ignorant of us means that although the world is sustained by him, the secret of Chisat as it is written, the world is built by Chisat. Tehillim 893, he nevertheless did not care for us as he did for Yishmael as it is written, oh that Yishmael might live before you. Bereshit 1718, the verse continues, and Yisrael acknowledge us not for all the blessings he should have conferred on his sons. He let this great the Nukba have to bless all this according to the verses, and this is that which their father spoke to them. Bereshit 4928, the Nukba called this, spoke on behalf of their father and blessed them also when he blessed Ephraim and Menashe. He said, as it is written, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, namely the Nukba, blessed the boys. Bereshit 4869, Yuhashim are our father, dash, namely the Nukba, always standing by to bless and care for us like a father taking care of the needs of children. Our Redeemer, your name is from everlasting for you, the Nukba are our. Redeemer, she is called the angel who redeemed us in the phrase, Our Redeemer, your name is from everlasting, your name is assuredly the Nukba called the name of Hashem. We have learned that we should not stop between reciting the blessings who has redeemed Israel and the Amidah or between the blessing of the hand Tephilin and that of the head Tephilin, as has already been explained. Section 2 Nefesh Ruash and Neshama Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda explore the idea that all details in the lower world have a counterpart in the upper world and that the creation of Adam is the culmination. The entire process of creation, the rabbis then discuss the nature of the emanations known as the Sphirot of the Creator, which gives rise to an extraordinary description of the qualities of the human soul. The three grades of the soul, Rash Nefesh and Neshama, are discussed and eventually agreed upon the relevance of this passage. Every action in this physical Dimension has a corresponding influence in the upper worlds. In truth, both worlds are actually one reality. They are like reflections in a mirror. This passage stimulates the high spiritual realms in which the light is aroused and then reflected back to us in the physical world to refine and perfect our souls. Perfection refers to the subjugation of the ego and the transformation of the selfish desire to receive into a desire to receive for the sake of sharing because sharing is the nature of it. Light when we share, we take on the nature of the Creator. In effect, we become God when a stone is returned to the mountain from which it was hewn. Oneness is again achieved between the part and the whole. There is no distinguishing feature separating them any longer. This godlike nature is awakened within us as we connect to this passage. Ten Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda were studying the Torah one night. Rabbi Yitzhak said, We have learned that when the Holy One blessed be he created it. Universe he made the lower world after the pattern of the supernal world and made the one correspond to the other. Every detail in the lower world has a counterpart in the upper world and he is its glory both above and below. Eleven Rabbi Yehuda said assuredly it is so and he created Adam above all who includes and completes all the parts of creation. This is the meaning of I have made the earth and created man upon it. Yeshayah 4512 Surely he does not need to remind us that he made the earth. So why is it written I have made the earth because I created man upon it who exists to complete its unification into one wholeness. This is the purpose of the universe and its perfection is man. Twelve he opened the discussion with the verse that says El Hashem he that created the heavens and stretched them out he that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it he that gives breath also soul to the people upon it and spirit to them that walk there in Yeshayah 425 this verse has Already been explained, nevertheless, thus says El Hashem, he that created the heavens refers to the Holy One, blessed be he high above, namely Bina, who created the heavens, Zeir and for Bina continuously improves Zeir and by emanating and giving him again, he that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it, namely the Holy Land, the bundle of life, the Nukba dash gives a soul to the people upon it, is the land, the Nukba that confers souls. 13 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is all above in Bina, he disagrees with Rabbi Yehuda, who said that the phrase gives a soul to the people upon it alludes to the Nukba, for from there Bina, the soul of life comes out into the land, the Nukba, the land receives the soul and issues it to all as the river that flows, Zeir and receives from Bina, holds all the souls and issues them to everyone in the land, the Nukba she receives and distributes them to all men who are worthy of her. 14 come and behold when the Holy One, blessed be he. Created Adam, he gathered his dust from the four directions of the world. He created him on the side of the lower temple, the secret of the Nukba, and then drew upon him the soul of life from the upper temple, the secret of Bina. Fifteen, the soul consists of three grades and therefore has three names, just like the supernal secret Nefesh Ruash and Neshama. The Nefesh, as has been explained, is the lowest of them all and comes from the Nukba, the lowest of the tense. Firat Ruash is its sustenance. It rules over the Nefesh, being of a higher grade, and is drawn from Zeir Anfin to sustain it well in everything, both in Chakma and Chesedim. The Neshama is the supreme existence, namely the light of Bina, which is higher than the light of Zeir Anfin and the light of the Nukba. The Ruash and the Nefesh it reigns over all, being a holy grade superior to all. The Ruash and Nefesh. Sixteen, the three grades Nefesh Ruash and Neshama are included within men who attain them by serving their master. Thus. First man has a nefesh with which to be corrected, but when he is intent on purification through this grade, man is corrected and crowned with a rash, the holy grade that
Upon grades Nefesh Rash and Neshama grade above grade first Nefesh being the lowest grade as we said then Rash which dwells on Nefesh and is above it Neshama is the highest grade as has already been explained 20 Nefesh is David Nefesh the Mukba which receives the Nefesh from the river that flows namely from Zeir and Ben Rash stands over the Nefesh which cannot exist without the Rash which dwells between fire and water namely Typhur at the central column between Bura called fire. And Shisid called water from your Nefesh is nourished 21 Rash depends for its existence on yet a higher grade called Neshama which is the origin of both Rash and Nefesh namely the light of Bana from which originates the light of Zeir and Ben called Rash and the light of Ben called Nefesh the Rash is nourished from them when Rash travels Nefesh also travels and all is one they approach each other Nefesh to Rash and Rash to Neshama and are all 122 command. Behold came near to him refers to the one world approaching the other world the advancement of the lower world the the aspect of Nefesh called Yehuda toward the upper world Yezid of Zeir and the aspect of Rash called Yosef so that all becomes one because both Yehuda and Yosef were kings they approached each other and joined together section 3 for the kings were assembled Rabbis Yehuda and Shia discourse on the meeting of the kings Yehuda and Yosef which symbolizes the union of the supernal worlds here and the lower world of Malchut the section explores the significance of the unity of male and female and the conditions most conducive atonement for sins the positive effects of the symbolic meeting of the kings is emphasized the relevance of this passage humanity shares important attributes of the moon like the moon we generate no light of our own just as lunar light is derived from the sun man spiritual light is derived from the bordering dimension known as Zir and Ben Light can only flow when these two worlds are enjoined just as a lamp can only illuminate when connected to electrical current on a metaphysical level woman corresponds to Malchut and male denotes the realm of Zir and Ben intimate relations between man and woman thus join Malchut and Zir and Ben in this world as well as in the upper realms this pleasure that accompanies this union is the light of the upper worlds filling Malchut when our consciousness is directed towards revealing the spiritual light during sexual relations the entire world is brightened and elevated the section of Zohar raises our consciousness so that we can transform the sexual act into a force for bringing down light rather than as a tool of darkness moreover the light that is evoked through sexual union shines around the world as we meditate upon this passage 23 Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse for the kings were assembled Tehillim 485 these are Yehuda and Yosef who were both kings the two of them came together to dispute because Yehuda became surety for Baniamin and pledged himself before his father in this world and the world to come he therefore came to argue with Yosef on account of Baniamin so he would not be banned from this world and the world to come as it is written I will be surety for him of my hand shall you require him if I bring him not to you and set him before you verse 439 then I shall have sent to my father forever Beersheet 4432 in this world and the world to come 24 therefore the kings were assembled they came on together means that they quarreled together and were angry with each other because of Baniamin then it is written as soon as they saw they were astounded they were frightened they rushed away fear took hold of them there Tehillim 486 of all them who were there 25 and pain like a woman in travail Tehillim 487 for they were fearful lest they would kill or be killed on Account of Baniamin for Yosef was sold by Yehuda and was lost to his father now that he became surety for Baniamin he was fearful lest he would perish thus it is written Yehuda came near to him 26 another explanation of the verse the kings were assembled is that Yehuda and Yosef came to debate with each other as kings they met to discuss the one with the other the one about Baniamin and the other about Baniamin this paragraph is redundant and the explanation is continued in the next paragraph 27 Rabbi Yehuda said the kings alludes to the secret of faith the Mukba for when desire was revealed and union adorned in male and female both the male and female worlds were joined together the one Zeir and Ben to open the treasure to spread IT and the other the Mukba to gather and collect plenty within it then the kings were assembled they came on together both worlds the supernal worlds Zeir and Ben and the lower world the Mukba 28 they came on together also passed for no sin in the world is atoned for until the male and the female are united as it is written and forgives lith passes upon the transgression which is 718 and also they pass together the sins pass because with the illumination of unity all faces shine and all sins are atoned for 29 Rabbi Shia said the secret of this verse applies to correction through offering for when a sacrifice is offered everyone receives their provision each according to what he deserves and then all is joined as one all faces shine and one bond prevails namely one union then the kings were assembled to atone for transgressions and make them pass away when the kings were assembled male and female and were connected they passed together dash namely they atoned for their sins so as to cause all faces to shine and make all of one accord 30 as soon as they saw they were astounded tail 585 to 6 he asked could it be that the king saw and were astounded he replied not they but the accusers who delight in executing justice according to orders they received when the kings were assembled with mutual wishes they saw the wish of both worlds male and female and they were astounded they were frightened they rushed away because all the accusers were subdued and passed out of the world for they cannot rule both their existence and their government were then interrupted 31 Rabbi Lazar said then Yehuda came near to him why he answers this is how it ought to have been for he became surety as it is written for your servant became surety for the boy the secret is that Yehuda and Yosef should have approached each other simultaneously because Yosef is righteous namely Yezid of Zeir and Ben and Yehuda is a king namely Malchut the of Zeir and Ben therefore then Yehuda came near to him because their coming together produced many benefits for the world resulted in peace among all the tribes peace between themselves between Yehuda and Yosef and caused the spirit of Yaakov to revive as it is written the spirit of Yaakov their father revived Bereshit 4527 hence their joining together was needed by all sides above and below section 4 beautiful for situation next Rabbi Abba further clarifies the meaning of this important passage relating it to Yosef then to the Sfirot and finally to the great king in a beautiful manner he shows how the secret of faith itself is embodied here the relevance of this passage 10 dimensions Sfirot comprise our reality the dimension known as Yezid neighbors our physical realm and it is a gateway through which all the spiritual energy of the upper world flows into our world our connection to Yezid is strengthened by virtue of this passage infusing our lives with tremendous amounts of positive energy 32 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth Mount Sinai the uttermost parts of the north the city of the great king Tehillim 483 This verse is the secret of faith beautiful for situation is Yosef the righteous of whom scripture says and Yosef was good looking and well favored Bereshit 396 He is the joy of the whole earth the gladness and joy above and below Mount Sinai the uttermost parts of the north is his portion Yosef's portion where the tabernacle of Shiloh stands Mount Sinai is Jerusalem namely the Mukbah the uttermost parts of the north is assuredly above and below for both the upper temple. The Mukbah and the lower temple are considered to be of the aspect of the north namely the illumination of the left of Bina, the secret of the illumination of Chakma 33 the city of the great king is a place prepared for the great king the most high king residing over the holy of holies from whom all light blessings and joy come so that all faces shine and the temple is blessed when it is blessed the whole world is also blessed section 560 breaths rabbis. Yehuda and Yossi later joined by Rabbi Lazar discuss the meaning of King David and Midnight Prayer. They are joined by a commoner Shizkiah whose name means strengthened by the Creator. He clarifies the meaning of David praying after midnight and explores the grades of life and death arriving at the profound understanding that it is through wisdom alone that everything in the world exists. We are introduced to the concept of the continually evolving nature of heaven and thus to the continually evolving nature of perfection through a discussion of the three columns and some secrets of the patriarchs. The rabbis return to King David to the meaning and concept of his being alive in the present and how such a miraculous event is possible. The relevance of this passage of mystical light aroused during midnight prayer is invoked in our lives. This light strengthens our soul and opens us to receive greater wisdom through spiritual learning and growth. Kabbalistic wisdom itself. Including these very words is also the sum and substance of spiritual light therefore each new lesson and each new insight makes us wiser and more pure 34 Rabbi Yehuda and
alive and exists forever and ever. King David was careful to avoid a foretaste of death and because sleep is a sixtieth part of death, King David whose domain is a living slept only sixty breaths for up to sixty breaths less one it is living from and on man tastes death and the side of the impure spirit reigns over him. Thirty seven King David guarded himself from tasting death lest the side of the impure spirit obtain control over him for sixty breaths minus one are the secret of supernal life. First sixty breaths are the supernal sixty breaths whose secret is that life depends on them from and downward it is the secret of death. Thirty eight therefore King David would measure the night until midnight so as to remain alive lest the foretaste of death dominate him at midnight David would be in his domain in his grave which is life and existence by waking up and uttering chants and hymns for when midnight stirred and the holy crown the Mukba was awakened David did not wish to be found. Connected to another domain, the domain of death. 39. When midnight comes, supernal holiness is awakened, but man is asleep in his bed and does not awaken to regard the glory of his master. He becomes attached to the secret of death and cleaves to another domain to the other side. King David therefore always woke at midnight, careful of the glory of his master alive before the living one, and he would never sleep long enough to taste death, thus he slept like the sixty breaths of a horse. 60. Breaths less 140. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yussi came and kissed him, for he revealed a new explanation concerning midnight prayer. They asked him, What is your name? He replied, Shiskiel, it's strengthened of Hashem. They said to him, May you be strengthened and may your study of the Torah be augmented. They sat down. Rabbi Yehuda said, Since you have started, tell us more of the supernal mysteries to which you have made reference. 41. He opened the discussion with the verse Hashem by wisdom. Founded the earth by understanding Hattavuna, he established the heavens Mishlei 319 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he created the universe he saw that it could not exist for the universe was created under the reign of the left column the secret of Chakma without Chesedim and Chakma cannot illumine without Chesedim therefore it could not exist until he created the Torah the central column called Zeir and also called Torah he caused the two columns right and left to be included within each other and Chakma was included within Chesedim and Chakma illuminated from the Torah namely from the central column all the laws issued by the upper and lower worlds which are supported by it this is the meaning of Yud Hei and Zeir and the secret of the central column as it is written by wisdom founded the earth he founded the earth by wisdom clothing Chakma and Chesedim so that the illumination of Chakma remained in the world through wisdom. Everything in the world exists and everything derives from it as it is written in wisdom have you made them all. Tehillim 10,424.42 Another explanation of Hashem by wisdom founded the earth is that the upper world Tevuna was created only by Chakma and the lower world the Mukba was created only by the lower Chakma Chakma clothed by the Mukba thus it seems that they were all issued from the upper and lower Chakma by understanding had Tevuna he established the heavens he asks. What does it mean by established he answers established refers to Tevuna which establishes Zeir and been called heaven every day they were not mended at one time rather he perfects them day by day 43 this is the secret of the verse and the heavens are not clean in his sight. Eot 1515 could you think it a derogation of the heavens on the contrary it is to the advantage of the heavens for it is because of the love and great passion that the Holy One blessed be he who is Tevuna bears. For the heavens Zeir and that he views them as not perfect enough it is for the love of them and because of his desire to shine continuously upon them he explains the world to come Tevuna radiates scintillating light every day without cessation to illuminate them always therefore they are not clean in his sight it does not say not clean but rather not clean in his sight this indicates that although they are in reality clean because of his desire to shower abundance upon them they are not considered clean to him as has been explained thus the scripture reads by understanding he established the heavens 44 he asks what are the heavens in the verse by understanding he established the heavens he replies they are the secret of the patriarchs Jesus Bura and Tiferet the secret of the patriarchs is Yaakov the central column Tiferet who includes them all as the central column includes the right and the left the secret of Abraham and its Hakferet it is Yaakov the most. Splendid of the fathers who causes the Mukba to shine on the world. 45 When he ascended to the world to come, that is ascended and clothed Israel and Saba called the world to come, the secret of covered Chesedim, which is why there is no place in him for the revelation of the illumination of Chakma. Branch came out from him, beautiful to the sight by the light of Chakma called sight and vision, and all the lights both Chakma and Chesedim radiated from it as did the abundance and the anointing oil needed to illuminate the land. The Mukba, what is this branch? It is Yosef the righteous who gives abundance, the illumination of Chakma to the whole world, which is sustained by him by the illumination of Chesedim. Therefore, whatever the Holy One blessed be, he does has meaning and all is as it should be. 46 While they were talking, Rabbi Laser came when he saw them, he said, Assuredly, the Sheshanah is here. What are you discussing? They told him what happened with the man and his words he said he spoke well he now explained about the sixty breaths the six hours before midnight pertain to life both above in the upper world where the secret of the chest and above of the nukva and below in this world from then on after midnight there are sixty other breaths which are chesed viratai for a is it of the chest and below all on the side of death and the grave of death is upon them they are called dormant asleep and all of them taste of death 47 king david therefore cleaved to the sixty breaths of life namely the six hours before midnight which is the secret of above the chest where the power of judgment and death which is in the chest cannot reach but afterward he slept not at all this is the meaning of i will not give sleep to my eyes slumber to my eyelids tehillim 1324 thus that man spoke well as david should be considered alive he is on the side of the living and not on the side of death then they all joined together to study the torah 48 Rabbi Laser opened the discussion with the verse Hashem the Elohim of my salvation when I cry in the night before you tell him 882 come and behold King David used to rise at midnight and study the Torah and delight the king and the queen with songs and praises this is the joy of faith on the earth for it is the praise of faith the Shechinah that is seen on earth 49 for numerous holy angels joyously begin to sing above praising at night on all sides even in the illumination of the left for then the Mukba reigns according to the secret of the verse she rises also while it is yet night Mishlei 3115 it is likewise below on earth for the holy one blessed be he takes pleasure in whoever on earth praises him at night and all the holy angels who praise the holy one blessed be he listen to the man who praises the holy one blessed be he at night on earth for this chanting increases the glory of the holy one blessed be he from below and sings joyously in unison 50 come and Behold King David wrote Hashem the Elohim of my salvation which means when is Hashem the Elohim of my salvation he is my salvation by day after I first sang to you by night then is he my salvation by day 51 come and behold whoever sings the praises of the Torah during the night before his master is strengthened by day on the right side which is Chesed this means that the Chakma he received by night through the left is clothed during the day by Chesed the right side for a thread of grace comes out from the right side it is drawn upon him and he is strengthened by it. David therefore said Hashem the Elohim of my salvation when I cry in the night before you 52 thus he said the dead cannot praise Yah Tehillim 11517 because it is the living who should praise the living and not the dead as it is written the dead cannot praise Yah but we will bless Yah before we are living and have no part of death Shizkiah who said the living the living he shall praise you as I do. Yeshua 3819 for the living has a connection with the living so is King David living and he came near the one who lives forever and whoever approaches the one living forever is living as it is written but you that did cleave of Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you this day of Aram 44 and and Nehu the son of Yehoiada the son of a living man of Kavs El 2 Shmuel 2320 section 6 and you shall eat and be satisfied and bless Shizkiah resolves it. Apparent contradiction that exists in the scriptural injunction that we should not eat before the first prayer of the morning and the injunction urging us to give the blessing only after the meal this leads to greater appreciation of the weighty task that the Creator has taken on in providing his children with longevity and nourishment we learned that the providing depends on mazel and here imbued with an astrological dimension not merit a complex and difficult mystery that is somewhat Clarified here leading to both a firmer grasp of the inherent mysteries that lie within the mystical union of male and female and also to a clarification
You shall not eat anything with the blood Vayikra 1926 which has already been explained as it is forbidden to eat before blessing one's master yet now it is written and you shall eat and be satisfied and bless which means it behooves one to bless only after the meal 54 he answers the blessings we recite before eating our prayers for unity between male and female while those we recite after eating have two purposes one to show proper satiation before the grade of faith the mukbah and two to bless her properly so that the grade of faith shall be well watered blessed and filled with joy from the supernal life as much as needed and thus will confer sustenance upon us 55 for providing man's food is as heavy a task for the holy one blessed be he as the cleaving of the sea of reeds the red sea why because all nourishment of the world come from above we have learned that children longevity and nourishment depend not upon merit but upon basil therefore daily sustenance is a heavy task for him for it depends upon Maisel from whence children longevity and sustenance are derived daily sustenance is hard for him because one does not have them before being blessed by Maisel 56 similarly arranging marriages is a heavy task for him and everything children as well as longevity and sustenance occurs because the firmament is a curtain that serves no purpose all the more so children life and sustenance which abide above in another place it therefore needs to be blessed too Receive from ants 57 come and behold the arranging of marriages is hard for this grave the mukbah for when union occurs which begets souls all the souls emerge from the upper mazel which is the river that flows from Eden namely Yezid of Zeir and and when there is a desire to draw from below upward to it to draw Shakma which is only drawn from below upward the souls soar to the mukbah and become in this great comprehensive of male and female together they are then separated so that each goes its appointed place later the grave finds it hard to reunite them the male and the female as before because they are only united through man's behavior and everything depends on what is above 58 therefore marriages are as hard for him to arrange as the cleaving of the Red Sea for the Red Sea was cleaved to open high roads above that then opened and cleft ways and roads below 59 therefore everything depends on the high region for the mukbah has nothing of herself after she is diminished and we should bless her and give her strength from above so she will be blessed and receive from above from Zeir and be well strengthened therefore it is written and bless Hashem with the particle ET before Hashem for it alludes to the mukbah called ET60 we should show before this place namely the mukbah satisfaction and shining faces and to the other side when it rains in the world it behooves us to show ourselves famished for the grade of the other side is hunger and we should look hungry before it instead of well fed because satiation does not rule over the world because of it it is therefore written and you shall eat and be satisfied and bless Hashem your Elohim as when holiness reigns there is plenty in the world Rabbi Lazar said assuredly it is so and so should it be that plenty abounds with the rule of holiness and famine with the rain of the other side 61 Rabbi Yehuda said happy are the righteous whose coming together brings peace into the world for they know how to bring unison and approach each other to increase peace in the world for until Yosef and Yehuda came near each other there was no peace once they came near each other peace increased in the world joy abounded above and below when Yosef and Yehuda approached each other and all the tribes joined Yosef the coming together caused peace to abound in the world as we have explained in relation to the verse then Yehuda came near to him section. 7 and Yosef could not restrain himself we receive an introduction to the types of men who descended from Adam and how each type can bring merit and benefit to the others just as a beneficiary or carrier of charity gains merit in the same degree as the giver this powerful analogy leads to further discussion of the relationship between charity carrier and the analogous fire that exists above our physical realm to assist our understanding of its inherent mystery unity is explored as it exists within a theme of mating specifically the mating of the Holy One with Israel in the illumination following the supreme union all can be blessed the relevance of this passage when a man and woman join together in sexual union within the spiritual confines of marriage their connection creates a stirring above the lower world embraces the upper world and divine life fills all but the man and woman must be pure of thought and joined by love their union must be accompanied by a Consciousness to share pleasure for the purpose of creating life for each other and the world. 62 Then Yosef could not restrain himself before all them that stood by him. Verse 451 Rabbi She opened the discussion with the verse he has distributed freely. He has given to the poor his righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Tehillim 1129 Come and behold the Holy One blessed be he created the world and made Adam ruler over it to be king over all. 63 From man four types of men branched out some righteous and some wicked some stupid and some wise of these some were rich and some poor they can bring merit and benefit to each other the righteous can benefit the wicked by causing them to repent their sins the wise can benefit the foolish by teaching them sense the rich can benefit the poor by supporting them in their need through these actions man merits life everlasting and attaches himself to the tree of life therefore the scripture reads he has Distributed freely he has given to the poor moreover this charity he dispenses stands forever namely the mukbah established by it is called ever as it is written and his charity endures forever Tehillim 1129 64 he has distributed freely he has given to the poor Rabbi Lazar said when the Holy One blessed be he created the universe he established it upon one pillar named righteous namely is it the righteous is the support of the world that is he supports the mukbah called world it is. He who gives water namely the illumination of Chakma and food the illumination of Shesedim to all as it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and branched into four streams Bershi 210 this is Yezid named river 65 in the verse and from thence it was parted what is the meaning of the word parted he answers it is the food and drink from that river that the garden receives which is the mukbah then drink is further distributed into the four directions of the universe so that all inhabitants of the world receive water from her and none remains thirsty how many wait for food and drink from there as it is written the eyes of all wait upon you and you give them their food in due season tail 14,515 thus the verse he has distributed freely he has given to the poor alludes to the righteous yezid which distributes and gives all of shakma and chesedim and supports all the poor of the world the verse and his charity endures forever refers to the congregation of israel the mukbah called charity which because she receives everything from yezid stands united in the secret of peace thus she stands forever the wicked man shall see it and be vexed tail 11,210 alludes to the kingdom of the idolatrous malchute of the other side which then envies the malchute of holiness 66 come and behold the kingdom of heaven the mukbah of zeir and is the temple it shelters all the poor under the shadow of it Shechina the righteous Yezid of Zeir Anpin is called charity collector because he bestows sustenance upon everybody namely the poor under the shadow of the Shechina therefore the charity collectors receive as much reward as those who gave them donations being a chariot to Yezid of Zeir Anpin called charity collector which includes all the Sfirat above IT67 come and behold then Yosef could not restrain himself before all them that stood by him who waited to receive food and drink. From him Yezid called Yosef could not restrain itself from showering abundance upon them in the verse and no man stood with him while Yosef made himself known to his brethren the words with him allude to the congregation of Israel which is the mukbah with whom no one stood while refers to the time of mating as mating is called knowledge his brethren are the other chariots and legions of whom it is written for my brethren and companions sakes tail 1228 because he mated with it. Mukbah so he could give them abundance we learn from the verse that while Yosef made himself known dash when Yosef united with the Shechinah he did it for his brother's sake since to means for the sake of another explanation of and no man stood with him concerns the time when the Holy One blessed be he approached the congregation of Israel to mate with her the verse while Yosef made himself known to his brethren refers to the time when the Holy One blessed be he joined Israel that is when the Holy One blessed be he was united with Israel no man stood of the other nations with him when he mated with the Mukbah for they alone received the illumination of union without connection to the other idolatrous nations hence it is written on the eighth day you shall have a solemn assembly be midbar 2935 for at that time the Holy One blessed be he is united with Israel alone of whom it is written for my brethren and companions sake 68 Rabbi Isa continued of the time when the Holy One blessed be he raises the congregation of Israel from the dust at the time of redemption and wishes to take vengeance on the idolatrous nations it is written and of the peoples there was no man with me Yeshayah 633 as it is written and no man stood with him and, and he bore them and carried them all the days of old Ibn 
of Zeir Anpin from whom blessings are drawn upon the congregation of Israel. To you I lift up my eyes from down below in the Mukbah is to yearn and wait for the blessings that come down from Zeir Anpin to the Mukbah 70. You who dwells in the heavens, Tehillim 1231. He asks if it refers to the Mukbah. Why does it say in the heavens which are Zeir Anpin? He replied, Because all the strength, power, and support of the Mukbah is in heaven. She receives them from Zeir Anpin called heaven for when it. The Oval Jubilee Bina opens the springs of all the gates of abundance of the fifty gates of Bina. They are all in heaven. Zeir Anpin and when heaven receives all the lights from the Oval Jubilee, it nourishes and feeds the congregation of Israel. The Mukbah through a certain righteous one, Yezid 71, because Yezid is aroused toward her. Many stand on all sides to drink and be blessed from there to receive from the illumination of the union as it is written, the young lions roar after their prey. And seek their food from El Tehillim 10421. She then ascends to mate in utmost secrecy as is proper and receives from her husband delicacies that she deserves, and all those on all sides who wait to receive from her remain alone and do not rise with the Mukbah as it is written, and no man stood with him, and, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. Only after she receives delicacies from her husband, namely after mating, is everybody given food and drink as it is written, they gave drink. To every wild beast, the wild asses quench their thirst. Ibn 11, section 8. Why have you dealt ill Moshe and Eliyahu who both said to the Creator, Why have you brought evil? This indicates the power of the evil side over the people of the covenant. We learned that the prophet Eliyahu did not die and continues to act as messenger to the people of the covenant to this present day. Neither Moshe nor Eliyahu died, we were told, but were instead brought directly into heaven. Immediately after shedding their bodies, the rabbis refer to a particular strength acquired by the soul when it is confronted by the powerful desire existing between men and women, and how more than any other human, the soul of Eliyahu was on the side of the male. The relevance of this passage, the people of the covenant are endowed with the most intense desire to receive. They can bring more light to this world than all other nations combined, but they can bring also more darkness if they are ruled. By their evil inclination, the strength to both recognize and subdue our negative impulses is impressed into our soul. We further receive the purifying light of Moshe and Eliyahu, whose influences help us rise above the desires of our physical body. We touch the divine realm of immortality and infuse our lives with the sacred and eternal energy. Seventy-two Rabbi Yossi opened a discussion of Eliyahu with the verse, and he cried to Hashem and said, Hashem, by Elohim, have you also brought evil upon the widow? With whom I lodge by slaying her son, I may lodge him 1720. Come and behold, there were two who said harsh words to the Holy One. Blessed be he, Moshe and Eliyahu. Moshe asked, Why have you dealt ill evil with this people? Shema 522. And Eliyahu answered, Have you also brought evil by slaying her son? They both said the same thing. 73. He asked, Why did they both say, Why have you brought evil? He answers, Because permission was given to the other side to rule over Israel. Moshe said, Dealt evil. Which means gave permission to the other side of evil to reign upon them. Eliyahu said, Brought evil, which also means that you allowed the other side to take his soul. This is why he said, Brought evil, all is one mystery. Dash, brought evil, I asked the secret of giving sway to the other side called evil. 74. Come and behold, Eliyahu said, Have you also brought evil upon the widow with whom I lodge? Because the Holy One blessed be he said to Eliyahu, Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Shema 59. Whoever nourishes and sustains the needy, especially in days of famine, is united with and cleaves to the tree of life and draws life unto himself and his children, as has already been explained. Now Eliyahu said, Whoever sustains one soul in the world merits life and merits to be united with the tree of life. Yet now the tree of death, the evil side, has power over the widow whom you commanded to sustain me. Hence he said, Have you brought evil? 75. He asks, What if you say? That no evil is brought on man by the Holy One, blessed be he answers, come and behold, when a man walks to the right, the Holy One, blessed be he always protects him, and the other side cannot have mastery over him, evil is subdued before him, and cannot rule when the protection of the Holy One, blessed be he is removed, because he cleaved to evil, then evil sees him unprotected, obtains power, and comes to destroy him, and it is given permission to take away his soul. 76 Moshe said, Why have you dealt ill? Because the evil side was given permission to reign over Israel, who became its slaves. Another explanation of why have you dealt ill is that he saw many from Israel die and be given to the side of evil. 77 Come and behold, when good the right is stirred, then gladness, goodness, and blessings abide all in secrecy, as has already been explained in connection with the sons of Yahweh, who said, Blessed be the name of his kingdom forever and ever, in a whisper there is secrecy, because Union is then carried out properly thus it is clear why Yosef said at the time of union cause every man to go out from me dash as union has to be performed in secrecy 78 Rabbi she asked how could Eliyahu who once he decreed the holy one blessed be he executed such as the one that heaven will not let do or rainfall be afraid of Isabel who threatened him with the words and more also if I make not your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time I may lodge him 192 how could he take fright and immediately run for his life 79 Rabbi Yossi replied it has been explained that the righteous do not wish to trouble their master where harm is obvious to the Ishmael for example asked how can I go if Shal hears it he will kill me and Hashem said take a heifer with you Ishmael 162 for the righteous do not wish to trouble their master about obvious damage Eliyahu too when he saw danger did not wish to bother his master 80 he said to him I have heard here that Scripture does not say of Eliyahu he feared Hebear and went for his life, but rather when he saw Hebear that I may lodge him 19.3 which means he saw something what did he see he saw that the angel of death has been following him these many years yet he was not delivered into his hands and now he went for his life lit nefesh which means that he went to the source of the sustenance of the nefesh which is the tree of life to cleave to it so the angel of death would no longer follow him. 81 come and behold it is written everywhere else to his nefesh yet here it is written for his nefesh I have heard a secret from Rabbi Shimon who said that all the souls in the world come from the same river is it of Zeir and they are all received by the bundle of life the and the female conceives from the male when the two sides are both desirous the female of the male and the male of the female when the male has greater passion than the female the souls are of greater endurance. Because everything depends on the desire and passion of the tree of life, Zeir and Peniliah, who came from that passion of the male more than other people endured and did not die. 82 It is therefore written for his nefesh instead of to his nefesh, or to Hebiti implies the female the Mukbah called Et, but for alludes to the male, you might say that it is written for the woman. He said, Bereshit 316, who is a female, he replied, it includes male and female, for when the female is included within the male, then it is written for the woman, he said, whereas to the woman indicates the female alone, not included with the male. Similarly, for his nefesh indicates the male alone, whereas to his nefesh indicates the female alone, because Eliyahu who is of the side of the male more than all other people in the world, he endured more than the others and did not die as did the other inhabitants of the world, for he comes from the tree of life and is not made of dust as are the rest of men. He Therefore ascended and did not die as do other people as it is written and Eliyahu went up by a storm of wind into heaven to Melashim 211 83 come and behold the verse a chariot of fire and horses of fire I Melashim 211 the spirit shed the body and he did not die the way of other men he remained a holy angel like other sacred supernal beings carrying messages in the world like an angel it has already been explained that the miracles performed by the holy one blessed be he are carried out by him 84 come and behold the verse and he requested for himself lit to his nefesh that he might die I Melashim 194 whereas previously it is written and went for his life lit for his nefesh which we have already explained alluded to his endurance here it is written to his nefesh to die to indicate the tree where death dwells namely the nook according to the secret of the verse her feet go down to death Mishle 55 there the holy one blessed be he revealed himself to him as it is written, go out and stand upon the mountain. I Melashim 19:11, followed by the words, and after the earthquake a fire, but Hashem was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice, which alludes to the innermost place from where all lights radiate. 85. It is written, and when Eliyahu
Blessed be he is not subject to the power of the angel of death as are other men instead peace is upon him as was said of pinches behold I give to him my covenant of peace Bimidbar 2512 section 9 and he fell on his brother Binyamin's neck and wept the neck is like the tower of David it is not of this world but rather of the celestial Jerusalem Yosef weeps because he foresaw the destruction of the temple and the exile of the tribes of Israel he is able to see. Such things because the Holy Spirit dwells in him although it does not dwell with his brothers the destruction of the great temple darkens the whole world we learn this was a painful foreknowledge Yosef was obliged to carry with him the relevance of this passage our planet contains many spiritual energy centers these serve as portals through which the supernal light of the upper worlds flows into our dimension Israel we are told is the energy center of the entire planet the city of Jerusalem is the energy source of Israel the holy temple is the primal source of energy for Jerusalem and the holy of holies is the fountainhead of spiritual energy for the temple reading this passage connects us to Jerusalem the temple and ultimately to he holy of holies this ensures that all our prayers deeds and meditations draw their appropriate light from this wellspring of spiritual energy 88 and he fell on his brother Binyamin's neck and wept and Binyamin wept on his neck Rabbi. It's Hawk said it has been already explained that he wept for the first temple and for the second temple that will be built on Binyamin's portion and be destroyed. 89 He opened the discussion with the verse Your neck is like the Tower of David built with turrets on which there hang a thousand bucklers all shields of mighty man. Sure Hashirim 44 He asks what is the Tower of David? It is the Tower of David in Jerusalem that was built by David namely that stands inside Jerusalem. Yet the Tower of David in the scripture is not this Tower of David but is the celestial Jerusalem namely the Mukva about which it is written the name of Hashem is a strong tower the righteous runs into it and is set up on high. Mishlei 1810 He asks who is set up on high the righteous or the tower he answers the tower is for into it the righteous yes it runs 90 Your neck is the lower temple which resembles the Tower of David which is the Mukva and is so called because it is beautifully. Built like the neck as the neck symbolizes the beauty of the whole body so the temple symbolizes the beauty of the whole world. 91 The phrase built with turrets had talpiot means a hill on which all the children of the world look to praise and to pray. It has been explained that the word talpiot consists of the letters talpiot lit amount of mouths it is a mound which all the mouths of the world praise and pray. 92 The phrase on which there hang a thousand bucklers if it refers to the thousand reconstructions fixed upon it that is on the illumination of Chakma hinted at by the number 1000 and all shields of mighty men are called thus because they come from the side of harsh judgment. 93 As all a woman's jewels hang round her neck so do all ornaments of the world hang about and dwell within the temple it has already been explained that the verse we are pursued to our next each of 55 alludes to the temple which is the neck and beauty of the world we our pursuit to our next we labor and have no rest that labored building it twice the first temple and the second temple dash and have no rest for we were not allowed any the temples were destroyed and not rebuilt 94 as when the neck is destroyed the whole body perishes when the temple was destroyed and darkened the whole world became dark too and the sun heaven earth and stars did not shine 95 for that reason for the two temples that were destroyed Yosef cried after he wept for this he wept for the tribes that went into exile for shortly after the temple was destroyed all the tribes were sent into exile and dispersed among the nations as it is written and he kissed all his brethren and wept on them meaning on account of their going into exile 96 he wept for everything for the temple that was twice destroyed and for his brothers the ten tribes who went into exile and were scattered among the nations and after that his brethren talked with him not what he wept because he saw the Holy Spirit come upon him but they did not weep because the Holy Spirit did not dwell upon them they did not see IT section 10 and the report was heard in Pharaoh's house the rabbis comment on the role of the voice in prayer the hidden relationship between voice and Sphirot is explained by the fact that an inner voice can be heard just as an outer one can but the inner voice relates to the sphere of Zir and Ben in a manner the heard voice does. Not there are we learn many different voices and those including the letter Vav are heard differently from those without it the rabbis conclude that when the creator raises up the voice that is now without the Vav the people shall come home from their long exile to worship him at Jerusalem's holy mountain the relevance of this passage human speech is intimately tied to the divine the voice can summon forth both dark and light forces different words and blessings resonate with the numerous. Supernal worlds that dwell on high each realm bringing forth a particular ray of divine light to illuminate our existence the ancient Kabbalists compose words and prayers that would radiate the brightest of light in this world this passage helps us stimulate the light that shines in all supernal worlds it inspires us to use our outer and inner voice to produce only positive energy 97 and the report live voice was heard in Pharaoh's house Rabbi Abba began the discussion with the verse my so long indeed it faints for the courts of Hashem my heart and my flesh cry out from the living El Tehillim 843 come and behold when a man prays before his master he should first recite his daily blessings and say his prayers at the proper times 98 in the morning he is to be united with the right of the Holy One blessed be he which is Jesus at Mincha the afternoon prayer he is to be united with the left of the Holy One blessed be he it behooves man to pray daily so as to be united with the Holy One blessed be he as has already been explained when he prays before his master he must not speak out loud for whoever speaks out loud will find his prayer is not accepted 99 why because the prayer is not an audible voice had kol nor is the audible voice of prayer what is then a prayer it is a different voice that is attached to the voice that is heard what is the voice that is heard it is kol spelled with the letter vav whereas the voice attached to the voice that is heard is kol without the letter vav 100 thus a man should never speak out loud when he prays but pray in a whisper which is an aspect of the nook of the secret of prayer by our prayers we unite the still voice with zeir and which is the audible voice this prayer is always accepted because it is desirous of being united with zeir and this is learned from the words and the voice was heard spelled without the letter vav in which the words is heard means it was accepted this is a prayer said in a Whisper as is written of Jannah but her voice was not heard. I Shmuel 113 This is a prayer that the Holy One blessed be he accepts a prayer that is made willingly and intentionally and is properly performed by a man concerned with the unity of his master every day in the proper manner. 101 Rabbi Lazar said a secret voice is a supernal voice namely the voice in Bina from which all voices are derived but a voice without the letter Vav is the prayer below namely the Mukva about to rise. And be elevated to the Vav which is Zeir and Ben and be joined with him to receive Shesedim from him. 102 Come and behold and the voice was heard. This is the voice without the letter Vav namely the Mukva when separated from Zeir and Ben the voice that weeps for the first temple and the second temple it is heard as it is written a voice was heard in Ramah Yermeah 3114 he asks what is in Ramah lit on high he replied it is a supernal world the world to come Bina this is derived from. Between Rama and Bedel Shoftim 45 which means from everlasting to everlasting live from world to world that is from Bina called Rama the supernal world to the Nukva called Bedel the lower world here too and Rama refers to the supernal world Bina for when it was heard in Rama then it is written and on that day did Hashem Elohim's OT call to weeping and to mourning Yeshayah 2212 103 and the voice was heard high above that is the Nukva went high up to the left column of Bina and then both temples were destroyed why were they destroyed because the letter Bob was gone from the Nukva for it clothed the right of Bina and the Nukva clothed the left of Bina thus they were separated from end to end and it is written Rachel weeping for her children she refused to be comforted for her children because he is not Yermeah 31 14 all her lights were stopped and because she therefore had nothing to give to her children they went into exile he asks why does the verse Read because he is not instead of they are not that is in the plural he replied it is written he is not as we explained because her husband is not with her if her husband Zeir and Ben had been with her she would have been comforted for her children her light would have not been stopped and her children would not be in exile but because he is not with her she is not comforted for her children and they were removed from her 104 come and behold in Pharaoh's house alludes to Anha. Bina which is the house from which the lights and candles are revealed it alludes to the Sphirot of the Mukva called candles all that was hidden is there revealed therefore Bina is called the house of Pharao
Creator of the souls of man and the divine. In addition, we arouse the light of protection and joy that emanates from the Shechinah 106. Now you are commanded to do this. Take wagons out of the land of Egypt. Bear she 4519. Rabbi, she opened the discussion with the verse. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her. Yeshua 6610. Come and behold, when the temple was destroyed and Israel were exiled from their land because of their sins, the Holy One. Blessed be he was gone up high and did not notice the destruction of the temple or his exiled people. The Shechinah then went into exile with them. 107. When he descended, he saw that his house was burnt. He looked for his people and behold, they were in exile. He asked for the lady, namely the Shechinah, and learned that she was exiled. And it is written, and on that day did Hashem Elohim spoke, he called to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. Yeshua 2212 and of the Shechinah it is written lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth Yoelitin because he is gone namely her husband for he went away from her and they are apart 108 even heaven and earth themselves mourned as it is written I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering Yeshua 503 all the high angels mourn for her as it is written behold the mighty ones shall cry outside the angels of peace weep bitterly Yeshua 337 the sun and moon were in mourning their lights darkened as it is written the sun shall be darkened in his going forth Yeshua 1310 everyone high and low wept for her and mourned because the other side reigned over her on the holy land 190 opened the discussion with the verse you son of man thus says Hashem Elohim to the land of Israel and end the end is come upon the four corners of the land Yashis 72 this verse contains a deep mystery what does to the land of Israel and end mean does it mean an end to the land of Israel. He answers, Surely this is true as we have learned there is an end on the right and an end on the left. He explained an end on the right as it is written at the end of days. Let right Daniel 1213 and an end on the left as it is written. He puts an end to darkness and searches out all perfection. Neo 283 This is the end of all flesh as we have learned. 110 The end on the right is written of in the verse to the land of Israel and end. the end is come. Upon the four corners of the land refers to the end on the left. The end on the right is the end through the good inclination and the end on the left is the end through the evil inclination which happened when through the increase in sins it was decreed that the evil kingdom would be given permission to rule and destroy his house and temple as it is written. Thus says Hashem Elohim and evil a singular evil behold is come. Yashis 75 111 Therefore there was mourning above and below four. Rain was given to the end of the left thus because the kingdom of holiness the kingdom of heaven was humbled and the kingdom of evil prevailed it behooves any man to mourn with it the holy kingdom and be abased with it also when the holy kingdom rises and the world rejoices he shall also rejoice with her as it is written rejoice for joy with it all you that did mourn for her Yeshua 6610 112 come and behold it is written of Egypt a very fair heifer your Mayah 4620 and it is because of the secret of this heifer that Israel were under its rule for many years that I asked for the 210 years they lived in Egypt because Israel would eventually rule over it in the future they were now given a hint of this in the verse take wagons also heifers out of the land of Egypt for your little ones 113 Rabbi Lazar said Yosef reminded Yaakov about breaking the heifer's neck that he went away from him when they were studying this text it has been explained that the ritual of the heifer was carried out when a man was found slain, but the killer was not known. The heifer is then offered to pacify the evil spirit so they would not recognize him or rule over the land. 114 Come and behold, all men die by the angel of death except someone who is killed by other men before the time has arrived for the angel of death to take hold of him and take his soul. For the angel of death does not have dominion over man until he is given permission from above. 115 Therefore, the angel of death has the right to rule over him as it is written, and it be not known who has slain him. Devarim 211 He also has permission since it is unknown who has slain the victim to accuse that place. The Mukba, therefore, the elders of that city shall take a heifer of it three in order to remove judgment from that place and to fortify it against the accuser's power so it shall be saved from him. 116 Come and behold, when Yosef parted from his father, he was sent without escort or without food and Whatever happened then happened when Yaakov said Yosef is without doubt torn in pieces. Bear she 3733 he added for I will go down to my son mourning into SHOL of 35 for I caused him to be killed having sent him without escort I cannot say our hands have not shed this blood. Devarim 217 concerning the breaking of the heifer neck which means we have not sent him unescorted I also knew his brothers hated him yet I sent him to them Yosef reminded him of that by sending the wagons both. Wagons and heifers are written Agalot in Hebrew 117 Rabbi Yehuda responded that the wagons were sent by the command of Pharaoh as it is written and Yosef gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh. Bear she 4521 how can you then say that Yosef gave them a hint by sending the wagons Rabbi Lazar replied it is derived from the exact meaning of the verse now you are commanded to do this which is redundant as it was previously written and Pharaoh said to Yosef say to your Brethren, yet now you are commanded has a specific meaning and is therefore spelled with the letter A at the end. This teaches us that its exact meaning is that Yosef asked him to give him wagons thus, and Yosef gave them wagons also heifers according to the commandment of Pharaoh. For it was Yosef who gave who asked of Pharaoh why did he demand wagons of Pharaoh because he wished to remind his father of the passage of the breaking of the heifer. Neck Yaakov therefore did not believe it until he saw the wagons and took the hint as it is written. And when he saw the wagons which Yosef had sent to carry him, the spirit of Yaakov their father revived. 118 Rabbi Shimon said, First it is written, and the spirit of Yaakov their father revived, and then it is written, and Israel said, It is enough, Yosef, my son is still alive. Why does the verse start with Yaakov and finish with Israel? He replied, First the Torah calls him Yaakov because the Shechina took part in the vow that. The tribes took not to reveal that Yosef was sold. The Shechinah was therefore gone from Yaakov all the time. Now that the Shechinah has come back to him, it is written, and the spirit of Yaakov their father revived, which is the secret of the Shechinah called the spirit of Yaakov. After the Shechinah was established in him, the high grade went from the grade of Yaakov to the grade Israel. From this we learn that the high grade is not awakened above until there is an awakening below for here. It is written, and the spirit of Yaakov their father revived first, which refers to the awakening below, and then it is written, and Israel said, which is the awakening above 119. And Elohim spoke to Israel in the visions of Maroti of the night. Bereshi 462. The word Maroti is spelled without the letter Bob, which makes it singular, thus alluding to the grade of the Mukba called vision. And also night come and behold the verse and offered sacrifices to the Elohim of his father. It's hot. Bereshi 461 is written first to awaken the left called it's hot in the secret of love to the Mukba nuptial love that is drawn from the left. And Elohim spoke to Israel in the visions of the night, which means that he was revealed to him by the grade we mentioned the Mukba called visions of the night 120. And he said, I am the elder Elohim of your father. He asks, why did he mention his name? He answers, because the holy side above is wont to do so, but the side of defilement does not mention the name of the holy one. Blessed be he. Yet every side of holiness is mentioned by name. I will go down with you into Egypt. Bereshi 464. From here we understand that the Shechinah accompanied him into exile, and wherever Israel went into exile, the Shechinah went with them, as has already been explained. 121. Come and behold, he asks, how many wagons were there? He replied, there were six, like the six covered wagons. Bimidbar 73. According to another explanation, there were sixty all. Is one secret for six allude to the six Tfirat Chesed Burit Tiferet Net Sachat and Yezadan 60 also alludes to the six Tfirat Egypt which included ten which total sixty he commented first it is written the wagons which Yosef had sent Bereshi 4527 and then the wagons which Pharaoh had sent Bereshi 465 he answers all the wagons that Yosef sent were in proper number and those Pharaoh sent were supernumerary not part of the secret or part of the reckoning 122 all the wagons reached Yaakov the wagons Yosef sent and the additional ones Pharaoh sent it is therefore written which Yosef had sent and which Pharaoh had sent when Israel will come out from
To choose our path in life two paths are always available the path of darkness personified by Egypt and the path of light denoted by the people of Israel and by Torah we have no control or influence over the consequences and rewards that accompany these paths we can however choose the path that we walk our self-destructive impulses impel us to constantly choose the negative path and the negative energy blanketing our world often blinds us to the folly of our choices the light emitted by these verses helps brighten the spiritual landscape revealing the doorways through which we must pass in order to attain peace prosperity and fulfillment 123 and Yosef made ready his chariot Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion with the verse and over the heads of the living creatures there was a likeness of the firmament like the color of the terrible eyes stretched out over their heads above Yosef's 122 this verse has already been explained yet come and behold there is an animal living creature above another animal and a holy animal standing over the heads of the other animals 124 there is an animal over all the other animals it rules over them all for when it gives of its strength and shines upon them they all travel about derive strength from it and rule one over the other 125 and there is an animal over the lower ones namely over the other animals below they are all sustained by it and the four winds of the world are impressed upon it certain faces shine upon each wind it has power over the four winds it has been explained that there are three of this wind and three of that wind and so on to the four winds of the world 126 there are a series of firmaments one on top of the other and a firmament that reigns over them they all look to it it is written and under the firmament their wings were held straight the one toward the other yes 123 for they are all in command over what is in their charge the right radiates from above down and it Left from below up and there is the spreading of a rope's measurement between the 127 there are three firmaments to every wind nine on each of the four sides of the world 36 firmaments in all when they are united they become one namely one firmament in the secret of the one name the mukbah called name within the whole as it should be 128 when they are shaped like a throne it is written and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance. Like a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it yes 126 it has been explained that when the precious stone the mukbah is fixed into the throne that stands upon its four legs and when the image of a man is upon the throne zeir and to be united with him and the throne which is the mukbah is joined with the man above it zeir and is fully blessed by him 129 when it the firmaments and the animals that are the Secret of the Nukba is fixed to form a chariot for that man Zeir Anpin then it is written and Yosef made ready his chariot who is the righteous Yosef of Zeir Anpin called Yosef the righteous dash and went up to meet Israel his father to Goshen Israel is the secret of Adam and the man upon the throne Zeir Anpin to Goshen is derived from their approaching Hajjish to be joined and united 130 and presented himself to him lit and he was seen to him the words was seen are difficult to understand for they mean that he was seen and then gone what does the verse mean he said when the sun reflects on the moon the moon shines and illuminates all those below in the world in the same manner as long as supernal holiness the light of Zeir Anpin hovers above the temple below the Nukba the temple shines and stands erect but here it is written and he was seen to him which means that the light was seen to her and then gone and after the supernal light of Zeir Anpin was Gone from her the scripture reads and wept on his neck a good while for they all wept for the temple that was destroyed the scripture adds a good while which means until the last exile 131 when Yaakov looked and saw that all was completed below between male and female as it is above between Abba and Ima he said now let me die since I have seen your face because you are still alive which means you live by the secret of the holy covenant called the one who lives forever thus he said you are still alive he had already said before it is enough Yusuf my son is still alive Beersheet 4528 he being the secret of the living one as has already been explained 132 come and behold and Yaakov blessed Pharaoh Beersheet 4710 Rabbi Yusuf said we do agree that Pharaoh was an evil clip according to homiletic interpretation even though it was explained in regard to another mystery that he is not an evil clip but descends from Ima of Atzala 133 yet come and behold I Compare you my love to a mare of the chariots of Pharaoh Sher Hasherim 19 come and behold there are chariots on the left in the secret of the other side and chariots on the right on the side of holiness the ones of holiness correspond to the others the holy ones are of mercy and those of the other side are of judgment 134 when the holy one blessed be he executed judgment on Egypt he did it exactly the same way as the chariots of the other side and in the same manner as that side is it kills and takes also the holy one blessed be he did the same as it is written that Hashem slew all the firstborn Shemot 1315 although he is usually merciful in the same way whatever he did in Egypt was in the very same manner therefore it is written I compare you my love because she is compared to the chariots of Pharaoh in killing and taking the souls of men the same way the chariots of Pharaoh who is the other side kill as it is written I am Hashem I am he and not another later it is written who is this that comes from Edom with crimson garments from Batra Yeshea 631 for then two Hashem will kill them and no messenger 135 come and behold it is written and Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen and they took possession of it and grew and multiplied exceedingly Beersheet 4727 and took possession of it means as a permanent heritage and they took possession of it because they and not the Egyptians were worthy of taking possession of it as has already been explained and grew and multiplied exceedingly because surely they had nothing to vex them and they lived in royal luxury as long as the tribes were alive they therefore grew and multiplied exceedingly blessed be Hashem forever and ever